I have three words for you, baby, and it is home sweet home. In fact, it's home sweet motherfucking home. You know what I miss what? the most? What? The toilet paper. Oh, God. The New York toilet paper. I don't care what establishment you go to. It could be the nicest place. It could be a homeless shelter. The fucking toilet paper is the worst. It's Scott. It's yeah, it's like they, they dominate the market. Everywhere has it, and it's fucking like wiping your ass with fucking uh, razor blades, Shards bro. Yeah, dude, shots of glass. <laughs> yes, yes, it's terrible. No, but you know what? We had a very, very eventful week, and it's great to be home. It's great to be home. Welcome, dirty, to a new episode. And when I say new, I'm talking about. Like, this is in real time. They're, or as close to real time as you're going to get. You know, because the thing is... We yes, did three episodes the, the last... Yeah. Pre-recorded. Yes. But now today's episode, we're going to talk about New York. Every single thing that happened from the minute that we woke up in L.A. and came back home. And I would Well, be not remiss. every single thing. And I would be remiss not to say, I'm Tommy, you're MJ. No, that's... We're Mary. You just said you're Tommy, not I know, oh. I was being silly. Oh, okay. You, know, you are silly. I'm a fickle bitch. Yeah, but she's... I like a... to change things up. <laughs> yeah. This is Till the Dirt. Uh, this is a podcast day. about our life, our relationship, you know, relationships in general. How we met. Yeah. Got married. This was a big week in our relationship or in our life, man. We did our first live podcast. You know, it wouldn't be possible without you folks out there. So we want to thank you. We're grateful for you because it was definitely a great, it was a, it was a, you know. Um, a sunny and share. No, yeah, it was a, it was a memorable <laughs> life life experience, man. Like I'll remember that for the rest of my life, one hundred percent. The first the first about. podcast episodes we did were a blast. Uh, we got to you know touch hands and 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 faces with a lot of the fans, you know, and it was it was you know humbling and it was a lot of fun. Well, let's talk about the very first thing that happened. I had to set the alarm for us at, for um, for us to leave our house to get to the airport. On Mother's Day at 5 a.m. Yes. Okay. So the alarm goes off at 5 a.m. I turn and I wake you up and you looked at me. And, and this is my, mo- yeah, it's my most Persian <laughs> moment ever. I was just like, fuck that. They're not serious. Like, no one's going to take off at that time. That's stupid. We got plenty of, don't worry about it. Yeah. 7 a.m. Yeah. departure is just a yeah. mere suggestion. Yeah. Come on, man. That's Milwaukee. It's like a. The pilot's not even. Hole. The pilot's in the same. I saw a flight. I saw Denzel. He was doing coke in the hotel room, like doing what? flight, the movie. What was he doing? He was doing coke and and drinking like an hour before his flight. You know, oh, he's he the was pilot. The pilot? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I saw that movie. You know I what I mean? I watched that movie. Oh, yeah. You, you love it. Watch it tonight? Sure. Sounds like a play. I love you. Yeah. All right. So I wake you up. You and so there's two ways that you can set an alarm. The alarm, are you the alarm person that when it goes off, you give yourself like this means I get 10 more minutes or 30 more minutes? What do you do? I I, I set a, a precautionary alarm. What do so you mean? I set an alarm prior to the time that I need to be up. Okay. I'll so, usually snooze a little, but I get up. I don't have a, I don't always like I get up. If oh, I, I have to be up. You that you get up no yeah, if I have to get up, I get up. That's why this was a real funny thing. Cause I was just like, yo, fuck that. That alarm's stupid. You know what I mean? That alarm is dumb. I don't want to talk to that alarm anymore. That alarm is, yeah, like get his, that alarm out of here. And you guys, so it is now 5.15. I'm in the shower and I go, mm, do a little quick math. And I was like, wait a minute, Tommy. We don't live in a neighborhood that Uber comes right when you call it. Like, it can take 22 minutes for the Uber to show up. And if we don't call the Uber right now, right now, we're not going to get to the airport in time. They're not going to let us check our bags. They're going to say we're past the limit. Oh, she was a frantic mess for the first two days of this trip. I mean. She's a frantic mess. That is, yeah, that I was. And I wasn't. I was just, I was calm, cool, and collected. Normally, I could be a ball, especially traveling with her, because normally it's like traveling with a train wreck, bro. But thank God, because one of us has to be the calm one. Absolutely. And so, it's, so I get in the shower at 5, I'm so excuse me. I check the clock at 5.15. I realize that we're basically fucked. And then the Uber comes when he comes. And then we think we're out the door, like suitcases rolling into the car. Guess what happens? We don't have, we're having like a car seat situation. We're having like a Tommy, because he has to do all the heavy lifting. 
and you can't manage to get the seat belt of the car strapped into the car seat, and you're like, babe, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Yeah, no, for for whatever reason, very, I, like, I was imagining up. that the the other car seat that we have was different than the one that we have, and it's not. So it's like, I was ha yeah, so I was having a problem with putting it in because I kept thinking it was different and it wasn't. Then when I took our original one out of the car and put it in the Uber, I could, oh, it's the same, duh. And so, you know, I got in the car, we got on our way and we were good, man. You know what I mean? We no, were good. We yeah, we were, we were good. We, were we late? Did we miss the plane? No. No. We were early. Yeah, we were early. We got on the fucking plane. We were able to eat. You were able to go to Dunkin' Donuts, complain to the manager, you, you, uh, talk about how you were never going to eat at Dunkin' Donuts again. And then literally we landed and she made a beeline for the fucking first Dunkin' Donuts that was around. So like, so, so uh, Karen wasn't true to her word, um, but I, yeah, I don't want to yeah. jump the gun. Um, okay. So we get on the plane, everything's honky dory and we take off and the captain said we got a tailwind. So it basically took us like four hours flat to get to New York. It was a super short flight. Yeah. During the flight. Uh, there was quite the, there was, so what? I, uh, I immediately, once they started passing out drinks, first of all, oh we were in business class God, you guys. and business class is awesome for anybody that's never flown it. It's awesome. It's just way better than coach. Um, I mean, it is, a, it is, they do pack them in there pretty tight. Yeah. And you know, the second we sat down, they're offering drinks. Uh, one in Rome, and know. I turn and I turn over to you, and I see Tommy says to the to the woman, "I would like a Bailey's and vodka." No, 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 Bailey's, Jack, and Coke. It's <laughs> it's like a fucking milkshake. It's delicious. Oh my god! And yeah, it's too bad they not black cherry soda. Then it's then it's listen, folks, it's spectacular. Okay, but I you know I pound and, that, and at the same time you ordered another drink. Yeah. You were, what was the other one? I had a glass of champagne because you had the champagne. No, but I didn't have anything to drink on the flight. Yeah, you did. You had champagne right away. I did not have anything to drink on the flight. Okay. You had two drinks. I had zero drinks. I was, okay. I was all about that body. Okay. And not getting swollen and puffy and all that. Okay. So what was your other drink? You I don't remember. I don't remember. All I remember is I took a nap. And I woke up and some lady's yoga pants were in my face. Who's that? Uh, because my wife <laughs> lost her phone. <laughs> and it then became everybody's responsibility in business class to yeah. look for my wife's phone. No, um, no, no, no. There was like an all out search. <laughs> Literally, I woke up, some lady's ass was in my face. Some other lady was, was on the floor like there was a fire drill. <laughs> And as she's looking for my wife's phone, she just keeps telling my wife how much she loves her. Oh, yeah. she was? Yeah. Oh, oh MJ, I love you so much. And, and now I don't see it. I don't see it. So everybody is looking for her. So I'm like, what the fuck is going on? She's like, uh, I lost my phone. I don't, I don't know. She's like, everybody no. is helping me look for it. And they're all helping. There's a mechanic. There's a, a stewardess. They, like... It's, there's like 20 people. It's like a crime scene, bro. <laughs> looking for her fucking phone. And Can I tell you what happened? Can I say my side? Go ahead. Okay. So when you recline your seat, the phone slips down. Oh, it's a black underneath. hole. It's a black hole, the and business class. That's the only drawback about business class. The seats, it, it, you're an, losing something. It's an abyss. And it's gone. But the, but, the, but the thing is, that's even happened to you where you lost your phone once, right? Literally, yes. Yes, okay. coming back from coming back from New York, I lost my phone to the chair. They had the mechanics, they had everything, and then we could they couldn't find it. And you just gave up. And yeah, it's like I can't do this, bro. I'm I'll fuck the phone. So I had I had assumed because I think that also happened to a couple of my other friends where they just like it came to my mind. I was like, what happened to them has happened to you, and your phone is gone. And it's the beginning of your trip, and you're not going to have a phone. So she, the flight attendant says to me, um. If your phone is stuck underneath your seat, do you mind not reclining it? Because if it cracks, then the battery can catch on fire. So I was like, yeah, of course, of course, no problem. Uh, so for this trip, I only take one purse. It's a cute bag. It's a Balenciaga graffiti bag. And it's about the size of a, I don't know, how do I say how big it was? It was like this big. 
It was just smallish that when I checked my purse many, many times. Well, listen, you're fucking fast forwarding way too quick Why? in the story. Why? First of all, as I said, everybody in there's everybody's in, in business class is looking for her phone. And like, there's a mechanic. I don't know where the fucking mechanic came from. No. There's another stewardess. There's like four or five people literally <laughs> sweeping the area for her phone. And she's frantic. I need it. The Maguires are freaking out. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I'm like, what the fuck? No. Well, listen, all of a sudden, it almost like happened in unison. Everybody was like, fuck her and her phone. No. They all stopped. Everybody was like, yeah, man, I'll have to tell you, I guess when we get, when we land, we'll look for it at the flight lands. No, they said that. Yeah. Hey, you know, hey, you know hey, whatever. Hey, she ain't that cool. They can take the, no, what had happened was we looked for it and they said, we're going to have to take the seat apart when everyone's in planes. Yeah. That so uh, basically everybody was like, all right, then fuck it. We're done. What else could we do? We they go sit back down. And then she out of nowhere. We gave up is what happened. Yeah, she out of nowhere makes an announcement to the business class that, oh, it it, it was in my purse. <laughs> no, no, no. It was in my purse. Oh, no. Everybody, <laughs> everybody, it was in my purse. We're flying over like fucking Wisconsin, bro. I thought they were gonna throw us off the plane, no, dude. No, everybody there was looking to be a fucking revolt. Wisconsin. And then she fucking then she sits down, relieved as relieved could be, yes. and she looks over at me and says, "Woof! <laughs> Thank God we found it. It was in her fucking purse. She had the balls, like with a straight I face. Said, Thank God! Like, Thank God! <laughs> Woof! Wow! <laughs> Thank God! Thank the Jesus Lord! Thank God that we, we found, found it. it. Yes. Yeah! Woo!" I the mean, guy behind her, sitting behind her, looked at me like, yo, bro, <laughs> good for you. You should get another round of drinks, dude. No wonder you're drinking at 7 Yeah, yeah. So, then we, <laughs> so then we continue to fly. And oh, um, there's more? Yeah, yeah. My wife okay. loves, what? loves to travel or to walk around with her sneakers on with no snacks. No <laughs> snacks. What well, snacks? What the fuck's a snack? That is the Peak 7 talking. It's, it's fluent. <laughs> It's fluent and gibberish. But uh, yeah, she likes to, you know, wear sneakers with no socks. Okay. And as people know who wear sneakers with no socks from time to time, your feet stink. No. So she looks never. at me. My feet never stink. <laughs> she, she, really she looks you at me. She looks at me. I have an asphyxiation or whatever you've got an obsession with my feet. Oh, far from it. Far <laughs> from it. Oh, arch nemesis. Oh, arch nemesis. That's like penguin to my Batman. Were you kidding me? Oh, but uh, yeah, she looks at me and she says, <laughs> I'm going to take my shoes off, but I think I got stinky feet. I never understood <laughs> that. You are fucking so out of your mind. I never would have stinky feet. They're brand new shoes. Okay, okay. Uh, and I just laughed and laughed. And then uh, she took her shoes off and we had to do an emergency landing in, uh, <laughs> in uh, the Rockies. Funny. The Rockies. Oh, no. But uh, yeah, we got off the plane, you know, so the rest of the flight was cool. Um, oh, okay. you, you know, I, I had to be gun, gun good din. I don't know if you know who he is, but the water, he, had, he carried water. But I had to be like the guy that carries everything. In the Bible? Yeah, when we got, no, when we got off the plane. <laughs> and, uh, and, um, and yeah, she ran, she made a beeline for Dunkin' Donuts to fucking get snacks. Uh, but it was good. It was good. No, we had the, the, okay. everything else was good. Um, this is what happened. But then, wait, I want to tell my Dunkin' Donut part. Oh, go ahead. So, well, hang on. Before we get on the plane, we're at Dunkin' Donuts in the airport, and nobody sent her a memo to let her know that they no longer serve like the ham and cheese croissant, the turkey and cheese. Like they only have sausage, and she didn't get the notice, and she wanted to go. She's like. I'm going to go complain. She went to the manager and complained. She was a Karen in the airport. No. The, yes. No, at LAX. Yes. You brought me, we, we usually get like a legit breakfast sandwich. I get a ham and cheese croissant and you get ham, uh, turkey, egg and cheese. And they don't have and that you anymore. came with me. They only have sausage. 
and I so, don't like sausage. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. And by the way, the egg didn't taste like an egg. <laughs> the sausage didn't taste like a sausage. The croissant bread didn't taste like croissant bread. Needless to say, the lady at Dunkin' Donuts had to hear about it. And she no, went and complained. I, went her, I didn't complain. I went up to her and I said, excuse me, can I get a turkey, egg, and Swiss or whatever? And she goes, we don't have turkey. And then I was like. Yeah, because apparently my, me telling her that, she didn't believe. She needed to go hear that from the lady herself. Stay from the horse's mouth. Yeah, it was terrible. Yeah, and uh, listen, so I threw it in the trash. I'm not gonna have empty calories of garbage food. So what what more can we do? Like just if you're she ever told me in the airport, I am never or no, she told me that she told me I'm never eating here again. Of course I'm not. And then we landed and she made a beeline for the first Dunkin' Donut she saw. Because I wanted a nice coffee. Yeah. I mean, did I get anything else? <laughs> yeah, I think you Take got a donut. Tops. Donut or something, maybe for the little guy. Maybe, I don't know. I don't remember. By that time, I was exhausted. But And then you're at baggage claim, and from baggage claim, you could see Dunkin' Donuts. And I don't make a beeline. It was the only No, you place. made a beeline. No, because we could have probably been gone for another four hours, and he wouldn't have even cared. Yeah, we woke up, and he had literally another, not literally, I said it again. Yeah, literally, 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 it literally. Lot, I've been saying a lot the whole <laughs> week, bro. I fucking hate to, I hate it to my head. But yeah, at least another two hours. Like, we we were home, relaxed, changed our clothes. We showered. Yeah, woke, and he woke up, and he looked at us both like, yo, man, what's up? What yeah. are you doing here, man? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where but, you been? But looking back, if we would have stayed, there was a brunch the next day, but that would have been another nine hours gone. And yeah. I just don't think we're prepared for that kind of like awareness. And no, but it was good. It, it was a good start. It was a good start. Like I said, for and, us to be at we're going to go back in July. To uh, Fire Island and New York. For Fire Island, and yeah, things. and doing a show, and, and same things. difference, you know. And Terry and Rich already told us they don't want to come to Fire Island. Just leave the baby with them; they'll be for they'll watch the baby. By the way, and so you know it'll be the next step. Yes, and we will do that in July. So for any of you guys that are in New York and want to know now, now that I'm not scared anymore, yeah. we will see you in Fire Island in July. But we forgot the most important other thing about the Bridie's show. Albert. Yeah, so Albert stepped in, man. Albert stepped in and stepped up, and he uh, he nailed it, dude. He has been, again. He works. He first off, the reason that he was late on Monday night is Albert couldn't come because he was. They had a, a special presentation for him. He was like, he, he he's wanted, a big deal at Bloomingdale's, dude. Bloomingdale's yeah, sacks. Yes, but he sells a lot of merchandise. He's like a stylist, whatever. He's real good at his gig. Bottom line, the point I'm getting at. He doesn't do entertainment. He doesn't do any of this shit. It's not his forte. And he stepped in and he fucking nailed it. And uh, we really appreciate you, Albert. 